All right. Welcome to uh, Module 2 in EDAP 688. This module is called Understanding, Understanding by Design. Uh, the shortcut term for Understanding by Design that you'll hear over and over and over again is UBD. This is very much a module where I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking at you because all the things that you need are sitting in here. And it is very heavily populated with lots and lots of material. But let's look at what it's asking you to do. It's first of all saying, how do you see technology being embedded, used through the lenses of facets of understanding in the UBD model of curriculum development? I'm going to show you where that lives here in just a second. And then the fun part of it is, with which teacher role from the article, putting understanding first, acquisition, meaning making, and transfer by Wiggins and McTeague, do you feel the most comfortable, least comfortable, and why? Develop a go animate. And there's your link, and there's your username and password to demonstrate the teacher role you best represents your teaching. And hopefully this is a uh, aha moment for you that if you realize that you are just a certain kind of teacher, uh, that you might want to take a look again. And then finally, the last thing we're asking you to do is to take a cursory attempt. In other words, looking at this is the lesson plan that you'll be using in your final. Um, and this is based upon the understanding by design. And as you can see, it talks about established goals, embedded enduring understanding, essential questions. There's nothing here that should make you feel very uncomfortable. Um, this is all very straightforward. Also, I understand that what you're doing here is to take a previous lesson or standard and use the simple UBD template. This is the template you use for the final. And fill it out. See how hard it is. Now, I'll show you resources for all this in just a second. But let me stress that this template is located over in Live Text. You don't fill it out here on the uh, Blackboard page. So let's go ahead and click in here. And let me bring this back around so I can see it. So this is where your article lives that you're going to be using uh, to do your GoAnimate with, as well as there are a ton of videos here. And this is probably the reason why I don't feel like I need to sit here and talk to you for a very long time is because the videos do such an excellent job of helping you understand the ideas that Wiggins and McTighe uh, talk about. This down here is a really nice website that takes you through the process of creating a UBD lesson. It's all called Storyboard. Um, I've used it with kids and designing multimedia things, just go through, every once in a while you have to click it close because it's trying to sell you something. Just go through it and look at it if you want to. If any of this stuff is like, what are they talking about here? It's all right there. But even more so than that is if you go into the folder at the top, and here we start, right here. This is Jay McTighe, and this is Grant Wiggins. I was very blessed with having the opportunity to have uh, professional development from these two guys many, many years ago. Um, they are some of the best presenters, although Jay is a little dry. Grant, though, is an amazing uh, presenter. I would urge you to take the time, and it doesn't take a long time. If we look up here, let's turn Jay on for a second. He's about seven minutes long. Turn on Grant. He's ten minutes long in this first one. And this, by the way, these two are definitely, they go together. They follow right after each other. And then this one, he's about 14 minutes. So you're giving up about 30 minutes of your time. 
well worth it. Now, you don't have to watch the UBD and core content. Uh, it's just not something that, frankly, since we're walking away from it, uh, that we really need to worry about. But now start down here and look at this um, very nice A wonderful, wonderful beginning. I don't know if you're hearing that video, but if you watch this, this gives you all the ideas that you need to be thinking about when you're thinking about technology in a lesson. Now, I have said back in the previous, uh, when you were looking at the module, I talk about something called facets of understanding. Well, let me open that folder up. And so basically there are one, two, three, four, five facets of understanding. There is no hierarchy here. In other words, empathy is not the least and explanation is not the most. Uh, it is what they tried to do is to look at it through the lens of how do we understand what can be going on. Uh, let's pop this one up. And so you see we have explanation, interpretation, application, perspective, empathy, and self-knowledge. Uh, that video says five, this says six. They kind of pulled, um, I think it's perspective and empathy out together. But as you can see, what this is about is how do kids interpret what they've learned? This is This is the what they're trying to get you to look at. Now, unlike, say, what we talked about in TPAC with Sh Schulman and his uh, pedagogical slides, they're not looking for you to combine these. They're looking for you to look at this and say, okay, since understanding by design is understanding by design, in other words, not by accident, you plan for all of this. And if the understanding then, kids do application so that their understanding has a demonstration, has a way of saying, this is how I get it. This is what I, I understand. And so what Wiggins and McTighe want you to look at is, could those understandings be an explanation? Could there be an interpretation? Could there be an application? Could there be a perspective? Could there be an empathy? Could there be a self-knowledge? And when you look at explanation, think about that for a second. This is that classic getting up in front of a class and doing a, a report. This is that classic holding up poster boards. How could we do this better with technology? Well, you've been playing with one. Good old Go Anime. You could do an explanation through Go Anime. Interpretation. Again, all of these have Web 2.0 products that can do these. And by the way, just so I'll make it clear again, because I said this in our um, Module 1 recording, Module 4 in this is not something you do. It's a resource. And in there are a ton of resources that have been culled together by people who have taken this class. So if you're out there and you're going, I really don't know what kind of technology I could use, go down there and look. It's not something that you have to do for class. It's a resource for class. So then you go down to application. And then here what you're talking about is uh, how, do, how do my understandings apply to this thing that you're asking me to do? Applications, you see that used a lot when you're asking kids to read a read something and then explain in their own words 
what it is that the author is trying to get across. Perspective is that idea about critical and insightful points of view. Uh, this one is giving the chance for kids to walk in somebody else's shoes, see, to see the world through someone else's eyes. Empathy. Empathy and perspective kind of are similar. Um, empathy is, again, about the idea of getting inside someone's feelings and worldview. And then self-knowledge. This, to me, is something that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, this idea about uh, epistemic agency. That's the big, you know, $2 word. Epistemic agency is that ability to talk about what you know and then what you need to know or what you don't know. Uh, epistemic agency, if we could get kids to use it, would make our teaching so much simpler because we just have people who would say, well, I get this, but I don't get that. And, ha and how does it fit? So those are the facets of understanding. Now, they have nothing to do with technology per se. See, the self-knowledge is missing out of here. They have nothing to do with technology per se, but you could use technology if you wanted to uh, use one of these facets of understanding. Do you have to use one of these facets of understanding, Steve? No. What you have to do is to think about how this would help you in your design of that thing that the kid creates after they've had the chance to learn something. This is the thing you'll hear over and over and over again from Wiggins and McTy, is education is all about understanding that then is transferred, or the term I use, applied. So education is understandings that demonstrate transfer or application. So a kid can basically say, oh, okay, so this is what I think this is all about, and this is my demonstration of how I see it working and how I see it applied. Wiggins and McTie's stuff is inside of everything that you are hearing in your PDs and in your PLNs and in your, your faculty meetings at school. This whole thing about uh, project-based learning that seems to be taking root in Jefferson County has, as a part of its beginnings right here in understanding by design, there are whole school districts that do curricular design based upon understanding by design, Odom County being one. So this is not some fanciful, you only get this at a university kind of thing. Oh, by the way, understanding by design was the basis for Danielson's PGIS, which I just read today is going away. That's a shame. Um, I don't think it was very good for uh, evaluation. I think it's very good for uh, discussions, communications around teacher work. But, you know, be that as it may be. Oh, and Danielson's, that Danielson's framework has nothing to do with technology in it, which I always found rather shocking that she would leave that out. So this, um, what are we doing with all this? As I said, you're going to take the time to watch these videos, take the time to look at the things that are here for you to help you understand. This is from their book, by the way, Understanding by Design. And you will love me because I don't make you go out and buy this book. It's very expensive. Um, and I, and then frankly, you know, as I said, I've, I've had these guys. Uh, and I think their stuff makes a whole lot of sense. Don't get me wrong. I am a firm believer in UBD. What I think is, and that's what I love about this opening of this little video down here, where they talk about, hey, it's just common sense. 
Yes, that's right. It's just common sense. Now, let me back out and let's look at the other piece here. I don't think I really need to talk too much about the GoAnimate, do I? You know, you know how to do GoAnimate. It's all in there. So let's go all the way to the top here. So you're going to be looking at this article, and the link is right there. There are other articles in here, but you don't have to read them unless after watching the videos you still are a little bit sh shaky on this. But as you can see here, I like this article because it's Grant and Jay talking to us. And, boy, if this isn't right out of, I mean, this is, this is their mantra right here. The high school curriculum should start with the long-term goals of schooling, meaning-making and transfer of learning. So now get that in your head. Transfer is synonymous to application. So once I've taught you about slope in your, is that Algebra 2, I think? Once I've taught you about slope, making meaning of it is that you can do slope problems, that you can graph them. Transfer would be taking the idea of slope and actually applying it to a real world problem. Designing a set of stairs, figuring out how to, to get the distance on a uh, project. This is a really nice article. It's very well written uh, and it speaks very eloquently to what you're up against. So what you're going to do is you read it and look for yourself in here. Or look what you'd like to be. And then you're going to use the Go Animate. And you're going to talk about your style. And then finally, let's go over this lesson plan real fast. <coughs> what are the established goals? You deal with them every single day in your teaching. They're called standards. Put your standard in here. That's all we're looking for. And when you put your standard in here, that is your destination. You'll hear this one over and over again. You can't start a journey until you know where you're going. So this is your goal. Now, it says up here, technology may be embedded here. The key word here is may. If there is no technology in your standard, fine. Don't worry about it. Enduring understandings. Technology may be embedded here. The students will understand that knowledge. Students will know. Well, what are they going to know? So technology may be used here to help students know. Technology may be used here to help them understand. Doesn't have to. Essential question, I think we all have had essential question shoved at us forwards and backwards. If this is all Greek to you, go back and look at that link that I put in there. And I'll show you that one more time. Notice there's no technology in here. <laughs> skills. So students will be able to, using a graphing calculator, students will be able to uh, answer problems that have to do with slope. Performance task. Huh. So this is where we do the application or the transfer, as the guys say. And so this is where we could say, using uh, a graphing calculator, students 
will test their designs on slope that is applied to a real world problem. Now, that could go right down here as well, by the way. So under learning activities, this could be using the calculator. I don't have to tell you how to do this. You know how to do this. Using the calculator, students will devise a set of a series of proposals for designs of a set of steps for a new building. There's all kinds of things you can do with that. Uh, if you're doing quadratics, you could have students design a fountain. Um, based upon how far the water would go once it shoots up in the air. And as you can see, technology is in here. It says may, may, may. And that means it doesn't have to be in every single one of them. It could be in just one of them. Down here, though, the learning activities, there ought to be something here that talks to technology. Not talks to technology, excuse me, that uses technology. This is nothing about, unless you teach technology, this is nothing about kids learning technology. This is about kids using technology. OK. Let me show you that uh, link I put in here one more time for those of you who uh, if, if any of this is like, oh my gosh, what in the heck is he talking about? Go here. Uh, and as I said, if that storyboard, you know, join storyboard thing keeps popping up, just go up in the corner and click it off. As you can see, this is strictly out of their book. And I really apologize for that annoying thing. I mean, you could do a free trial, I guess. I think I actually have a Storyboard. I tell you what, if I still have my storyboard um, username, password, you know what I'm saying, I'll go ahead and put that in uh, where the link is, and that way you can, uh, you don't have to have that annoying thing pop up. But what I like about this is it takes you through everything, uh, and just, you know, it's it's so easy, it's so very straightforward. So if if you are totally in the dark on this. Come in here and look at this and use it. You know what? While we're all sitting here for a second, let me go ahead and log into that. And let's see if uh, I can, if I still have my account. So we know the routine here. It's that same uh, username and password that you use for GoAnimate. And let's see if, if this account is still good. It says no. So let me try one more time with a different password. Nope. One last time. Nope. Okay. Sorry about that. I can't get you in. So you're going to have to just kind of close that off if you need it. If you need it. Now, let me, last thing I want to do, and I am surrounded by dogs right now. <laughs> so if you hear any funny noises, that's dogs that are sitting next to me here. Let me take you over to Live Text and show you how this works. So in Live Text, you only have really two things in the Live Text for 688. Um, the one where you're working with what's in these modules is right here, and it's called the EDAP 688 Reflective Projects. And when you open that, you'll see that here's the Module 1 one talks about the infographic that you made, and then the video that you selected. And here's where you do the um, scoring of that video using this TPAC uh, rubric. That's all right here. And we talked about this last week. Now, for this module, 
what you're doing is you're going to put your GoAnimate URL right here, and then here's that same model lesson plan that was over there in um, the Blackboard space. Okay? And then the last one that we do, and we will talk about this next Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, this one is for Universal Design for Learning. And I've got to fix this particular one because this is incorrect. But I'll fix it today. You don't have to worry. This one is where we're going to use something called Edpuzzle. And we'll spend a little time next week uh, actually demonstrating Edpuzzle because you need to see how it works. Uh, and then we'll also talk about universal design for learning. Another very powerful component of technology use in education, universal design for learning. Last thing I'll show you is this is what I was talking about with Module 4. So use this module to explore resources for do, to you to use in your UBD mini unit. And there's tons of them right here. And then there is tons of them right here. And there I have I will put in here a, um, oh, by the way, this is a, a very nice, we did this one summer where everybody made uh, voice threads about their favorite uh, product to use, technology to use. I also have a folder in here about, um, it essentially is all the different um, tutorials for technology use of various products. So that's, this is not a module that you have to do. It is a module you have to use. And here's good old UDL. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop right here unless um, Jill, who's the only one in the room with me, has any questions. And uh, I think of all the modules, this one is about as straightforward as they get. You're basically going to watch a series of videos, read if you need it, especially that web page. And again, I apologize for the constant, you know, uh, advertisement that pops up. And then just take a look at a lesson plan that you either have or you follow or you want to look at, create from scratch is what I mean. Then try to see if you can get your head around this whole thing. By the way, this video down here at the very bottom, uh, this is me talking to you about it, and it goes into a lot more detail. So if you need that kind of detail, uh, it does exist here. And Jill says she has no questions. So, Jill, I'm going to call a halt to the proceedings. My goodness, that was like 35 minutes. Uh, I hope this is helpful to you. As always, you know how to get a hold of me. 502-457-2937. Uh, uh, I will clean up that little bit of a mistake in the uh, live text. And... I will talk to you next Wednesday unless you reach out and talk to me before. Thanks, everybody.